Please enjoy all the cat footage I have in this video throughout the entire process of working on this painting, which was three separate days, I want to say. Both of my cats were like super involved and on my desk so much, it was very precious. Aslan especially likes to like very much so get in my way, which can be obnoxious because he always wants to sit on whatever art piece I'm working on. And that's very sketchy when it's like <laughs> wet media of any kind, but they were both being so, so sweet when I was working on this piece and they just wanted to hang out with me. So of course, I'm not going to throw them off my desk at any point in time. So there's so much footage of them just hanging out with me and I appreciate it so much. And I hope you guys do too. Something I have been doing super, super recently with my artwork is actually sketching my artwork digitally on Procreate on my iPad and then using that to transfer it onto an actual piece of watercolor paper. It's something that I've surprisingly never done in the past. I've thought about it before, but in my head I'm like, eh, I don't really want to. But the other day I did this sketch and I really liked it, but I personally prefer doing traditional media so, so much more than digital media. So I decided I would give it a shot and try tracing it onto watercolor paper. And it worked really well in the actual sense of using my iPad specifically as a light box. However, it was really hard to see the lines because I didn't realize I had grabbed two sheets of watercolor paper. So the paper was twice as thick, I could see it half as well. And I didn't realize how thick the line work of the colored pencil I was doing was. So that's something about this piece where I'm like, ah, oh, I really don't like how that looks because Generally, I prefer to have much more thin line work than this, and the paper is super textured as a whole too, so it's kind of hard to avoid. This specifically is the Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper, which I've only used a couple of times now, but this piece specifically really made me change my opinion on that watercolor paper. I really noticed when I was painting the character on the left, Kyoko, that this watercolor paper, especially for the reds, it really, really desaturated colors compared to when the paint was wet versus when it's dry, which is something that I was really surprised to see because I've only had a couple of other kinds of watercolor paper do that for me, but especially for the arches to do it, it was it was very disappointing. <laughs> like I really like how this paper holds water, how it handles water, it lifts really easy, it's nice thick paper, but that was kind of disappointing because I felt like to get the saturation I was initially laying down. I definitely had to go in with several layers. I didn't notice it nearly as much when I was painting the cool colors on the other character, Sayaka, but for the reds especially, it was just like, oh, we have to do like three layers for this to actually appear saturated how I want it to be. So that was an experience. I still have like 10 sheets of a pad left, so I'll still work through them and see if that issue kind of comes up again. Maybe it's just for like warm tone colors. I'm not really sure, but I noticed in both the skin and in the hair and like everything that was red that it just, once it dried, it really, really desaturated the color. Also, I figure I should mention that I don't have all the footage of doing this piece. I lost some of it due to my camera timing out on how much footage it can record in one session. And I just kept painting and I didn't realize that it wasn't recording anymore. And also I painted this over the course of several days and the weather here has been so, so like on and off with what it's doing. We had clouds, we had snow, we had sun over the course of literally one day. So the lighting in a lot of the clips I took were like really off and it would constantly be changing. So for the ones where it was really, really bad and I could not really color correct it at all in my editing program because I use Wondershare Filmora to edit my YouTube videos and it's a really good program. It just has like really limited tools when it comes to color correcting or any kind of like visual correcting of an image. It's not the greatest in that sense. So for the clips that were like really, really bad, I just straight up cut them out of the video because I really didn't want to have to spend like half an hour editing like 20 minutes of footage to make it actually look nice. So we just cut it out. Not much important happened. Most of it is actually in this video, but I did cut out some chunks that were just not, not doing it for me color wise. I've been really happy with the artwork I've been making lately though. I've talked about it in my most recent videos as well, but I've been trying to focus more on doing artwork on loose sheets of paper, more finished, like collected pieces that are planned out versus sketchbook work, which sketchbook work for the longest, longest, longest time. I think like for most of my time creating art, I've really focused on making sketchbook work, which there's nothing wrong with inherently like 
by all means, I have taught myself so much by just working in sketchbooks, but recently I've been really wanting to work on more finished and planned out illustrations because I'm definitely the kind of person who wings it anything when it comes to art, whether that be I am not going off of any kind of references, I'm not going off of any kind of thumbnails, color planning, composition planning, anything like that, which has definitely worked in my favor in some instances, especially when it comes to composition specifically. I get questions every now and then where people ask me like how I come up with compositions, like what practice did I do, how do I come up with compositions that turn out the way that they are. And honestly, when it comes to composition of a piece, I am never intentionally focusing on composition. A lot of times when I have free space, I just subconsciously find something to fill it. But like when it comes to poses and stuff like that, I'm not thinking about composition of the piece or anything like that. It just like, I guess, comes naturally to me. I don't know how I got to this point, but I'm very grateful for it because it's definitely something I straight up never acknowledged until other people started asking me about it. I was like, oh, I guess I do just like come up with compositions that work really well and flow very well and I'm not even thinking about doing it. So that's something I'm immensely grateful for, but I've definitely gotten to the point where I feel like the best thing I could do for my art right now is really push myself to do much more finished pieces. I used to do like every now and then I would do like what I would consider to be a finished piece in my sketchbook, but it's really never taking it to the level at which I would consider like a separate finished piece to be. Just because like, first of all, with like finished, finished pieces, I have so much more control over the paper, which is a really big thing because I can choose what kind of paper I'm using, I can choose what size of paper I'm using, so I don't feel restricted to using whatever size of page is in the sketchbook I'm working with. So that's also been something that's really nice because otherwise I felt like I worked on a pretty small scale and being able to work on loose sheets of like 9 by 12 paper is really nice because I have so much flexibility, whether I want to cut the page or use the entire page, whatever it may be, and I feel like the pieces I've been putting out that are not sketchbook work, I have been super, super proud of. I do like how this piece in particular turned out. However, I wish I didn't go so dark with the line work. When I was going in with the colored pencils, I immediately went towards a really dark blue and I think I even used black in some places. But looking back on it now, it's a lot darker and a lot less soft than I intended for it to be because I really like the soft, like, airy look to artwork and that's something that I want to produce in my own artwork. And I just went really dark with the line work and especially with, like, how textured this paper was, putting colored pencil on top of it tended to make the colored pencil very thick versus like a super refined line just because the paper is super textured. So that's my one beef with this artwork is that I really wish I had stuck to lighter colors and worked on like softly building up the line work as well as also potentially not going so dark with the colors in this piece. I think it would have looked better if it was like more soft, more pastel. But as a whole, I am still very happy with this piece. I really like especially how the flowers and stuff in the background turned out. I'm very, very happy with how I painted those and did the line work and all the foliage. I think that stuff turned out really, really pretty. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.